In linear algebra, every time we have a nice algebraic concept, we want to do our best to translate it into a geometric concept as well. So let's do that for invertibility. We know an algebraic notion of invertibility. It's if you've got some matrix, you, you multiply by some other matrix, A inverse, where A times A inverse is the identity, or I can flip it around and A inverse times A is going to be the identity. But what does all this mean geometrically? We know that if I have a matrix, that a matrix can be thought of as representing a linear transformation, something that goes from a domain to a codomain. So I want to imagine that I've got perhaps some domain here. In this case, it looks like R2, but it could be something else. And then I'm going to transform it, and I'm going to have some codomain. And this codomain could be anything as well, but but it has to be the same thing as the domain. I'm going to restrict myself. If I began in R2, I'm going to end up in R2. If I began in Rn, I'm going to be end up in Rn. Sort of the analog of demanding that my invertible matrices were square is saying that my domain and my codomain had the same dimension. But nonetheless, I'm going to have some transformation T, and it is going to be a linear transformation that has a matrix A that defines it. So the words, the TA is going to take some vector x, and it's just going to be that matrix A times the vector x. Now, what does it mean for this transformation to be invertible? Well, the idea is this. If I've got one transformation from my domain to my codomain, I can go also the other way around. And I can have some other transformation that I will call S, and it has some other matrix that I will call B, where it operates by taking the B and multiplying it on the X. And then we will say this. And then I will say this. Our transformation is invertible if, when I go around the circle where I first do the T and then I go back through the S, if going around in that circle takes every vector to the same spot. In other words, it's like doing nothing at all. That is my notion of invertibility. So what I have here is an existence claim. If I start with a transformation T and I want to know, is that transformation T invertible? Then I say, is there some other transformation S where either way that I could compose them, I'm going to get an effect, an identity transformation. It takes an X vector just to itself. This is completely analogous to the situation with matrices where you had a matrix A and you said, if it's invertible, then there exists an A inverse where a times A inverse or A inverse times A, either way you might do it, is going to be equal to the identity matrix. Now, I have two different concepts here, to be clear. I have a concept geometrically about what it means for a transformation to be invertible. And I also have this algebraic concept of what it means for a matrix to be invertible. I've given them the same name, even though they apply in different worlds. And if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to be justified in calling them the same thing, I need a sort of connection theorem between them. I need to say something like this. A transformation, a linear transformation is invertible if and only if the corresponding matrix that represents that linear transformation, if that matrix is invertible. And that connection is going to be one of our key facts for linear transformations. So in other words, I've said that if I have a linear transformation represented by the matrix A, then the transformation is going to be invertible precisely when, if and only if, that corresponding matrix A is going to be invertible as well. I'm going to prove just one of the two sides for you. I'm going to prove this direction. The direction that says, let me start with it being an invertible matrix and deduce that I've got it being an invertible transformation. In other words, I'm supposing that A is invertible. Which, of course, just means that there is some matrix A inverse, and it has that nice property that A A inverse is equal to A inverse times A is equal to the identity. That was our defining property, pro property of being invertible as a matrix. So 
if I think about what I'm trying to prove that I've got that TA is an invertible transformation, what my definition says is I have to find an S. I have to find an inverse to that particular transformation. So what I'm going to do is let S be that the transformation that is defined by A inverse. In other words, the way S works is it takes the matrix A inverse and multiplies that to the vector X. This is my definition. So now let's see whether this S, whether this transformation I've defined satisfies the property that I want. I need to pro satisfy the two properties that I have over here, one and two. Well, if I go and try composing them, so let me go and take T of S of the vector x. Well, by the definitions, S here is going to be represented by matrix multiplication by A inverse. T is represented by multiplication by A. So this is just going to be equal to A of A inverse of x, which by our nice property that we have previously defined is just precisely going to be equal to x. So that's my first of my properties, I have those. And the second is gonna work much the same way, S of T of X. Well, the S is defined to be multiplication by A inverse, the T is defined to be multiplication by A. And this is indeed just gonna be equal to vector X as well. And so what do I have it? I therefore have concluded that my TA is going to be invertible. So that transformation t which is defined by the matrix a sometimes i put the a in to, to just to make it clear sometimes i don't need to doesn't really matter so ta is invertible and i'll leave the other direction of this proof for you